Hi, welcome back. Um, I am here ready to sew something. I know I've been promising a hair tutorial, but I just have a couple more things to do before I do that. So I felt like sewing something. I have been sewing projects uh, since my last video, but nothing new. I've kind of been working on old projects and kind of feeling uninspired uh, with everything I've been working on. So I thought, Maybe it's just time to, to cut something out that's new. Um, well, new vintage, new vintage, not new. Um, and I'm feeling very springy and also kind of 1940s, even a little bit 1930s, which I don't really have many 1930s patterns, something I would like to expand on, um, but That'll have to be in the future. So I picked out the springiest rayon that I own. Um, in fact, it's, I think, the only rayon in white that I've ever had. And it has the prettiest little scene of dancers. They're kind of like a part of the tree. So are they little woodland fairies? Um, it's so pretty. And I found this on Etsy like five years ago. Um, I paid $17 and I have like over two yards. That was an incredible deal. Um, and I've been a little bit afraid <laughs> to cut into it, but, um, for Christmas, my husband bought me this 1940s, um, Butterick pattern. It is number 3301 and it has these beautiful pannier draped hips. I think it is so pretty and I have just enough fabric to cut this out. So um, I'm gonna lay out all my pattern pieces, get to cutting, and then we'll get to sewing. So I was actually just checking um, my instructions because I can tell that the previous seamstress, um, she kind of cut through the pattern. Um, it's hard to tell in an unmarked pattern because there's no black outlines or blue outlines around every edge. Um, if you're cut into it, it, you kind of have to guess like, is this an original um, slice, you know, in, in the pattern? Part of the shape or did someone with their scissors cut it and in this uh, particular instance I do think she cut all the way into the slash now I think you know the the tidiest way of doing this is to mark on your pattern because um, what you do is you for a neckline like this you slice into the pattern and then we're gathering one edge of it Alrighty, so I wanted to kind of show you a little bit better because I think it was confusing how I explained it. Um, I know in my mind how things works, how things work, but sometimes I have a hard time putting into words how it works. This is the front bodice piece. Um, we've got our dart perforations here. So that goes, you know, this is your waistline. Here's your sleeve and underarm. And this is a slash line. So let me show you the pattern here we have this gathered neckline so on a slash line you can see the perforations and we're going to be cutting all the way down here but it's not always good to cut through the pattern because um, you kind of lose the line if, if this tears anymore we might lose the perfor or the perforations the holes and then you don't know how far or where to stop. So I will be marking these little dots all along my fabric with a pencil. And then I'll be doing a reinforcement stitch, just top stitching along those edges and then cutting into the fabric only because then we'll put two gathering lines here and we'll be gathering all of this into this space. Um, so just something to keep in mind, maybe not slicing the pattern, but slicing the fabric. Okay. 
Alrighty, I'm here at the sewing machine. The first step in the instructions are to fold down um, the top edge of the um, bodice, that's the neck edge. So I will just be folding this over a little bit. It doesn't specify um, how much to fold it over, but then we'll be folding it again and I have um, a line and I'll be pressing it and then hand stitching it down and this will be creating our neckline facing. Alrighty, next step is to put in all the darts in the front bodice, so two at the bust, two at the waist, and I'll also be reinforcing that slash line, so just uh, top stitching a little V shape um, on the marked dot. So I'll get that finished and do the next step. Okay, so now slash, slash lines just scare me. I have reinforced into the uh, point of that. Now the next step is to run gathering stitches all the way down here. Shrink it down, pull up those gathers, and stitch it to that. Okay, alrighty, gathering stitches are in. Um, it just sort of has you start um, at about half an inch seam allowance. It's at along the perforations, which were about half an inch in, and then they kind of narrow down to the point. So the gathering stitches are right on the edge of the fabric, which I hate doing that, especially with rayon because it frays. Um, but I will be going in hand stitching everything and tacking it um, to kind of enclose those raw seams. Um, I'm just going to pull the, the gathering stitches down and then have it uh, meet up with the uh, center front and just gather all this into that uh, little triangle peak shape. All right, so I have everything pinned in place. Um, took some finagling to do, and I'm just gonna stitch it on each side and then I'll have to um, fold these over and encase those raw edges. It does say to do that in the instructions, so I will get working on that. Alrighty, it's the next day. I meant to get a lot more done yesterday, but I ended up having to run a few errands and put the project down. But the front is all done. Time to move on to the back. Um, the next steps um, are having me top stitch a V shape, a very narrow V, um, down the center back neckline all the way to this little mark here and then um, make little button loops which I need to pick out some buttons so I know how big to make the loops. Um, so I just made a little bias strip per the instructions and um, we'll just be stitching these down creating little loops to go over our buttons, and then we'll be putting the uh, back neck facing piece over that and adding the dart. So I'm gonna get working on that, and hopefully I can get a little more done today. Um, so I'm gonna go find some buttons.
Alrighty, so I stitched the um, back neck facing to the back uh, bodice. You can see my little facing right there. Um, I stitched it along the top and also down into a V. Here is the point and it's a little wider um, from the center back. It's a fourth inch on each side at the center and you taper it down to almost nothing in, in the middle of the V. Um, so I will just carefully snip between um, these two stitching lines, flip it inside out. I'm going to go press it and then we can attach the back to the front bodice and start <laughs> making more progress. Alrighty, I tried the blouse on or the, the top of the dress and it seems to be a perfect fit. So I went ahead and I zigzagged my side seams just to kind of control um, the fraying. <laughs> Ambulance is going by. Um, now the instructions don't have me add the sleeves um, in the next step, which I thought would have been the next step, but it moves me on to the skirt and it had me put some little reinforcement stitches in kind of an L shape. This is the front of the skirt. And then we're going to be clipping diagonally into this little corner. And then the next step is to fold this little top edge down and then fold it again and make a hem. And then I'll have to um, hand stitch that down uh, nice and neatly as invisibly as I can on each side. Um, and then that's probably going to be about all I can get done today because I'm meeting up with my dad for a walk in about an hour. So um, I'll see how much I can get done. Good morning. Alrighty, so last night I got the side pleats done and the center seam um, sewn up. So now it's all in one piece. I tacked the, the side pleats in with just, just a little machine basting. I was being lazy and I didn't want to do it by hand. Um, so now the next step is to attach the front skirt to this front yoke piece because those hip drapes drape down if we didn't have this yoke our hips would kind of be exposed so um, there are also three little dots um, that I have marked and I marked them very faintly so I have to go back and carefully find them and um, then we'll be tacking them down invisibly to kind of help the structure of these pleats so that they're not just draping freely in towards the center of our like tummy. They, they're tacked down so that they're a little bit more structured and have some help. And then we'll be um, stitching this yoke in place along the sides and then constructing the back skirt. Um, so that's just some straight stitches up and down. So we should get through that pretty fast. So I'm gonna get this started. Alrighty, so I have the entire skirt constructed and I zigzagged all my seams, um, tidied them up a little bit. As of right now, the pleats that I invisibly tacked are not sitting right. Um, 
I marked them as best as I could. And when I met the dots up from the, the yoke piece to the skirt pieces, they're just not laying right. I, I did try it on. Um, and as of right now, there's just too much um, material sitting in front, even though the dots are matching up. And I think that's the rayon that kind of, it, rayon, it just squiggles around. And so even though the dots are matching up, that doesn't necessarily mean it's right. So I'm going to leave them as is because I don't want to do them again and still have them wrong once the dress is in its like final, final resting place, you know, attached and being pulled in all the right directions because, you know, I only tried it on um, and I can only hold it up to my body until it's attached to the dress, um, to the bodice with the sleeves on, the zipper in place, zipped all the way up, the belt on, then I will know exactly where they need to lay. So I'm gonna leave them as is. I'm gonna put the um, bodice to the skirt. This is the classic 1940s way. You um, fold back the seam allowance um, on the skirt. I ironed it down and then I meet it up with the bottom edge of the bodice and you top stitch the skirt on top of the bodice. It's, it's a little bit different than more modern methods, even 50s methods. Um, have you meet up, you know, edge for edge and you sew your seam inside, but this one you fold it under and top stitch it down. So I will get to pinning this together. Alrighty, so I have the bodice attached to the skirt. Um, just top stitched that on. Now, the next step in the instructions are to add a zipper. Um, now, when it comes to rayon, I try to always use a metal zipper. I prefer a metal zipper in all my clothing, but especially for rayon, for something so soft and flowy. Um, metal zippers are just so much more flexible and they're really gonna um, just be a lot softer, especially modern plastic zippers. I mean, the polyester that they're made from is so stiff. It's it's like putting a piece of plastic in your clothing and it's, it's gonna stay really rigid. Um, the zipper in this is in the side and if there's a plastic zipper, it just kind of sticks out and it's just not very nice, so I try to save <laughs> my metal zippers for special special pieces. This one I found at a thrift store, and it's um, it's dated 1947, and the illustrations on the back are very fun, very 40s. I love it. So I'm going to carefully take the zipper out and save the package. And I will be hand stitching my zipper in. When it comes to rayon, it's so slinky and it really likes to stretch on a zipper. So I'm just gonna stitch this in carefully by hand. Good morning again. Project is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would be. Um, but <laughs> I've been taking lots of breaks and doing lots of other things. So I'm ready to get it done today. I installed the zipper yesterday. So it's starting to look like a dress. The bodice is attached to the skirt. I'm happy with the zipper. Today I'm going to be moving on to the sleeves and that's what I'm doing first this morning. So I'm just going to mark the top of the sleeve, make sure I can line that up with the seam line. Um, I used to think that that didn't matter when I was a teenager and I would just go and put the ease in and sometimes the top of the sleeve would like end up here and it does make a difference. So I'm very careful about marking the top of my sleeve now. And we'll be setting those in. Um, I might hem them, hem the bottom of the sleeve before I set them in. And that is one spot where I'm going to be differing from the instructions. The instructions say to cut a bias strip and make a little self-facing for the bottom. 
I, I usually don't mind making a bias strip for a facing. However, when it comes to rayon, no matter how hard I try, the rayon always slips around and I can never get it cut like to a perfect width. It always has this little divot kind of snake pattern in it and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So um, today I'm just probably going to be doing a little tiny itty bitty rolled hem. Um, I've done that on several rayon dresses before um, and I learned to do that from the instructions of one of my patterns. And I have liked that method the best for rayon sleeves. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. All right, so try the dress on, sleeves are on, zippers in. All that's left to do is hem the dress, make the belt, which I have a little belt kit right here, really cute shape one. I'm slightly worried about the adhesive um, sticky stuff for the buckle. I'm gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. And one thing about the dress, I was saying that the hip drapes, I could tell they were wrong, but I wanted to wait till I could at least, you know, try it on. Yes, I don't have the shoulder pads in yet. I haven't even made them, but I don't think that's gonna affect the drape of the hip too much. This side definitely needs work. I think this side is okay. Um, I took one out already I sort of clipped my stitches out and was playing with it and then it <sighs> I can always do one side but I can never like replicate it perfectly on the other side in all things um, and so of course one side is wrong <laughs> um, and I mean so I think I'm just going to take them all out because if I take one out, it affects the other. I should take them all out and kind of play with them because this has like this pucker right here, um, this little like pleat. And this side I think is laying just fine, kind of like it is in, in the illustrations. So I'm just going to play around with this side and then stitch it in place. Um, and then the hem. I haven't decided on the length yet. It's it's pretty nice right now. Um, me stand back. Let's see. No, no, there. <laughs> So, I am all done with the dress, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, it took me a little bit longer to, to finish this project, but not because the pattern was difficult or anything. I just have a lot of other things taking my attention. Um, so, I'm very happy to be done with it and to be able to move on to other projects um, because I'm always wanting to sew something new but I'm so happy to be able to add this to my closet. I love rayon and I love 1940s pieces. And even though I seem to have a lot, um, I feel like I never have enough. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. The pattern was easy. Um, I think I was expecting a little more difficulty in these gathers here, and these were very easy. The hip drapes were just a little finicky, but I really don't think that is the fault of the pattern. 
I think that was my fabric choice and possibly when I was marking it I didn't I think maybe the fabric shifted a little bit but it was an easy fix all I had to do was just readjust them and tack them down I just don't like having to redo work that I've done it's just laziness on my part but I'm so happy with my dress and I hope you like it too thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you next time